To start this job, I'm going to start up here, and the first thing I want to do is remove this strut bar that connects the two sides. It's going to make the job a lot easier because it's going to give me more access back there without that in the way. Of course, if your car doesn't have this, then don't worry about it. For me, I need to take off these two 14 millimeter nuts, the same to the other side, and then this will pull right up. The next thing I want to do is get a bunch of this stuff out of the way, so I'm going to start with moving the coolant reservoir, then taking the engine mount, moving it out of my way, and then I'll work my way down towards the drive belts. Take this and set it aside so I can have more access from this direction. I'm going to put this back so I don't confuse it for any other bolts. There's going to be a lot of 10 millimeter headed bolts coming, so make sure you keep them all organized. If you want to move the power steering reservoir, you can, but the only way to do that is to disconnect this hose and it's going to make a mess. So I'm just going to leave this in here. Next, I want to remove this dog bone mount right here. Both of these are 14 millimeter heads, by the way. I'm going to pry this out like that. And off it comes. These two bolts, I'm gonna put right back where they belong for the same reason. I don't wanna mix them up by accident with other bolts. Next, I wanna get this whole mount assembly off. Before I do that, I'm gonna disconnect my engine grounds here, pull up on this tab and pull away, and do the same to this one. Now remove these two 14 millimeter bolts. Oops and then remove this 12 millimeter bolt there, as well as this one right here. And then this can move out of the way. I'm going to start disconnecting the wiring harness from this timing cover. Uh, there's little tabs on the backside of these retaining clips. If you just pry on them with a screwdriver, it'll allow the harness to pop off. And do that. Oh, that one's already broken. Do that all around. Back here, I'm actually going to tie it with a bungee cord. That's going to hold the harness up and out of my way while I work. With some wheeling, this should actually come off of here. There we go. Has a little dowel pin that gets seized up. Next, I'm gonna start removing timing cover bolts. There are 10 millimeter bolts all the way around. Not sure how well you can see it, but there's another bolt right here. There is another one right behind this harness here. All right, so at this point, you can pull the timing cover up and out. Might be a little tight trying to clear this rear cam with this hose in the way, but just try to angle it so that it can come out. There we go. Next, I'm gonna break free this alternator mounting bolt here with a 14 millimeter. You don't have to remove this one, but you do have to loosen it a little bit. And then there are several 12 millimeter bolts that I have to loosen up. Uh, this is actually a nut. Break that one free. Break free this 12 millimeter bolt right here. There's another one underneath right here. And there's a nut right here. Break that free too. Now go ahead and remove all these completely. This bracket should slide right out at this point. Okay, that one stays in. And remove that one nut that was down here. Now break free this stud right here with a 12 millimeter and remove it all the way. Oh, actually it's a nut on a stud. I thought it was one of those studs with a built on nut. All right. 
Now this mount bracket is free to come off once the lower timing cover comes off. So let's move on to removing the belts. To remove the alternator belt, which has to come off first, I'm gonna loosen up the locking screw. I'm gonna loosen up this locking bolt for the adjusting for the manual tensioner. You don't have to take this all the way out, but you do have to loosen it quite a bit. Make sure your uh, tool doesn't get jammed up against the frame right there when you do this. Now, if you come from the top, you can spin this bolt right here. And if you thread it counterclockwise, it will pull the alternator down and that's going to release tension for you. And now you can pull the belt off of the alternator and you can finish taking it off from up here. And now it's time to move down below and take off the power steering belt. Next step is to take off the wheel. This is going to make things a whole lot easier from down here. I guess you don't really have to, but you kind of have to. 21 millimeter socket, take off all the lug nuts. And remove the wheel. Right behind the wheel, you're gonna notice the splash shield that has to come off. 10 millimeter bolts, two of them, take them off. And take off the splash shield. To loosen up this power steering pump, you'll notice a 12 millimeter bolt right here. This is for the adjuster. Go ahead and break that loose. And with that loose, there's another bolt up top I know this is not the best view, but basically what you want to do is sneak your socket up top. It's a 12 millimeter. Grab onto this bolt right here and just loosen that up a few turns. Once you loosen that, it will allow the power steering pump to pivot. And there you go, it already started moving. So I'm gonna stop right there. And now I can grab the power steering pump. I'll grab it by the hose right here, push it down, and take the belt right off. Take it off the harmonic balancer, and there's your power steering belt. Next step is to remove the harmonic balancer. Go ahead and get a 22 millimeter socket on the crank bolt, and I strongly suggest a very powerful impact for this. It can be electric or pneumatic, but whatever it is, it's gonna to have to be powerful. Anyway, 22 millimeter socket, take this right off. All right, let's try this again, this time with a little bit more power. That's better. To pull this harmonic balancer or a crank pulley, you are most likely gonna need a puller, and they do make one that grabs onto the sides and pulls out. That's most likely going to chip the ribs, and that's not good. So the way I'm gonna do it is use these two threaded holes. They are threaded at eight by 125 thread pitch, and if they're super corroded, you can always tap them with a, uh, with a tap. So thread in your tool, thread these on quite a bit. Oops, it's touching the, uh, the timing cover in the back, so I'll back it off a little. That's fine. So you do wanna make sure they're even. And now in the center of this tool right here, there is a little um, pointy cone that's gonna slide into the crankshaft just like that and thread this on until it puts pressure on those bolts. And it puts pressure on this bolt first, so I'm gonna tighten this one just a little bit. Okay, that's perfect. I have even pressure on those bolts now. And what I wanna do at this point is tighten the center rod. It's gonna press on the crank and then it's gonna pull the harmonic balancer out. Again, you wanna make sure that these are evenly tightened. You don't want it pulling at an angle. And if something is not going right, stop, check what you're doing and make sure that you're not damaging the crank or anything else. Perfect. And there's your harmonic balancer. This is the cone that I was talking about. This has to sit 
right in the center of that crank in order not to damage it. Now we have access to the lower timing cover. So take off all the 10 millimeter bolts that hold it on. This one seems to be a little too tight, so I'm gonna break it free by hand first. Wow, this one might break. <sighs> well, after a lot of trial and error, the bolt came out. It did a little bit of damage, but uh, at least the cover came off. But at least now we have access to the timing belt. Take off this right here. And now we have to put the bolt back in, thread it in all the way, but don't make it super tight, just bottom it out. And now let's move up top. Now from up top with the lower cover off, this can slide right out of the way. There we go, taking it off is a little bit tricky because you have to clear these studs in the frame, but here it is, whoops. And the next thing we want to do is actually loosen up the cam gear bolts the cam gears have to come off and the backing has to come off as well. So this one is gonna be very easy to get to with an impact. That one is gonna be a little more challenging. The 17 millimeter socket, remove this one. So mine came off all the way. You actually want it to stay in there. I didn't mean to take it off all the way, but the air gun goes kind of fast when you're at full power. So put it back. Make sure it's almost uh, close to being bottomed out and just leave it there. You don't want this cam gear to actually pop off by accident. For that rear cam bolt, I actually have a breaker bar on the crankshaft that's propped up against the frame so it can't move that way anymore. And then I have another breaker bar up here, which I'm going to use to loosen up this bolt. Make sure your breaker bar is seated all the way. And ah, there we go. Pretty tight, as you can hear, but that's it. I got it loose. And now let's get this engine to top dead center. All right, so to get this engine at top dead center, which is the next step, you wanna have this mark, there's a little line. Yours might not be marked with white. Someone has already done this timing belt before, so it has been marked here and here. Same on the rear cam and same on the crankshaft. So it's easier to go by the uh, white marks. But if you don't have the white marks, there's a little indent here on the back timing cover. This is a cutout groove. This is gonna be the same thing on the rear cam. And then on the crank right here, you have this little dimple that's recessed into the gear on the back here. And then you have this bump right here that this dimple has to match up with. So the lines up top, this needs to match up with this. Same on the back cam. And this little dimple has to match up with this bump right here. So the way I'm gonna do that is with a 22 millimeter socket on the crank, spin it clockwise. And as you can see right here, the two marks match up. However, right here, they don't. That means we're 180 degrees off. So I wanna keep going. And I'm doing this with a breaker bar because the breaker bar will prevent the engine from spinning backwards. It'll spin backwards a little bit, but you don't want it to spin backwards a lot. All right, so right here, I'm at the proper timing mark. As you can see up top, these two line up perfectly. And if you look at the rear cam, that white mark right there lines up with that one right there. It's really hard to show you, but it'll look the same as this right here. So now we are exactly at top dead center. So let's take the belt off. Go ahead and take the crank bolt out now. And with a 12 millimeter socket, break free these two mounting bolts for the tensioner. If you have a long extension, you can get to this one from underneath. And loosen these up evenly, go little by little on each. Now I have a new tensioner, so I don't have to reuse this one. I can throw it away. Next, with a 10 millimeter Allen head, remove the tensioner pulley. This thing can be pretty tight in here. There we go. Now when you pull this off, uh, coolant's dripping because one of the water pump bolts is loose, but basically when you pull this off, you wanna make sure that the washer that is behind this bolt comes off with it. And if not, 
you definitely want to fish that out of there. This right here, very crucial, because that's what spaces this tensioner out the exact amount from the block. If not, the belt is not going to ride on it properly. So I have a new one of these too. This one's trash. Next with a 14 millimeter, go ahead and remove the idler pulley. All right, and I am also replacing this, so this is also trash. At this point, you can pull the belt off, pull it off of both cams, and pull it off of the crank. And here is your old belt. At this point, you can remove the cam bolts and remove the cam pulleys. Be sure not to mix them up. Well, I mean, you can't really mix them up because they only go on one way. So I remember that the front one has no lip on the front, but this rear one does actually have a lip on it. The uh, front cam, the front cam has it on the back side. So I'll remove this bolt and remove the cam gear. At this point, you'll see a bunch of 10 millimeter bolts holding this backing plate on. I'm gonna go ahead and remove all those. There should be six of them, two around each camshaft, and then another one here, another one here. And go ahead and pull this right out of your way. Looks like there's a retainer for the wiring harness here, so go ahead and remove that. That broke. You're gonna have to wire tie that in place. And remove this backing. Next, I'm going to remove this cam seal. I'm gonna use a screwdriver, go down underneath, and just try to pry the seal out. There it comes. With a clean rag, clean up the area a little bit. To put the seal in, I don't want to put it in dry, but actually what I mean by that is I don't want this seal, the back of the seal going in dry. So you see how there's a little spring in there? You want to fill that up with petroleum jelly. And the reason I use petroleum jelly is because it's made of, well, petroleum and that's also what the oil in the engine is made of. So if this mixes in with the oil, it's not a big deal. And filling this gap in with petroleum jelly makes it so that the spring that's in there won't want to pop out. You don't need to pack it tight. You just need enough to cover up that spring in there. And whatever else I have left, I'll put it on here so that the seal can slide on nice and easy. All right, so go ahead and slide this on. When you slide it on, make sure that this inner lip doesn't peen over like that over the camshaft. That would be really bad. Press it on all the way. And your seal is installed. And now we'll do the same thing to the rear. There it is. All right, so the cam seals are installed. All right, the next thing to do is to remove the water pump. I'm gonna start loosening up all the bolts. The coolant is gonna start pouring out of here. Even if you drain it beforehand, it's still gonna pour out a lot. So have a drain bucket ready underneath. Okay, that's it for the water pump. Now you can grab it and slowly pry it away. If needed, you can use a little pry bar. And there you go. Just let that drain. And now you can remove it all the way. There you go. And there's your old water pump. Now you want to take off the old gasket. Looks like this is a paper gasket. You can use a screwdriver to help you pry it away or just scrape it off. And then I'm gonna use a razor blade to properly clean this surface. You can see there's some corrosion going on here. So I think this is pretty much as clean as it's gonna get. 
At this point, I blocked off the three holes for the water pump inlets and outlets, and I'm going to use some brake parts cleaner. Be very careful when you do this because you don't want to you don't want it to actually go into the holes. That's why I have it blocked off, and you don't want debris going in there too. So spray it down, clean it up. All right, let that dry. So you'll notice that I have two studs missing here. I took them out and that's because I wanted to clean up uh, the area a little bit better. So before I put them back in, I'm gonna blow out the holes. I don't want any coolant getting in there because I don't want to compress the coolant into the hole. Now this hole, uh, it's funny because the air actually comes out of there when I blow into here, so that would not be a big deal. But this one is a blocked off hole, and as you know, fluid does not compress. And if you try to compress it in there by tightening this bolt, you could crack the block. You can use an inverted torque socket, an E8 to be more precise, and you can take these off and then you just snug them back up. They don't have to be super tight, just make them snug because once you bolt the water pump up to it, the pressure from the water pump bolts and nuts will pull these out and make them therefore even more tight. So that's tight and that's tight. Perfect. I'm going to just dry off the area here before I mount my new gasket. I just want to make sure there's no coolant buildup anywhere. And the new gasket is actually a steel gasket with a rubber seal. So it'll be a whole lot easier to remove down the line than what I had to deal with, it took me about 15 minutes to remove that paper gasket. So get your new seal or gasket, whatever you want to call it, slide it on here. It only goes on one way, so there's no way you can get it backwards. And then same with the water pump, it goes on just one way. I actually have it upside down. So slide it on. If you remember, it slides onto this bottom stud first, then bring it up to the top stud, then slide it on all the way. There we go. You should not need any sort of silicone or sealant behind this or between the gasket and the block. This gasket should take care of everything. Now go ahead and install your four bolts and two nuts. Then I'm gonna to torque them to 53 inch pounds. All right, that's tight. To replace the front main seal, remove this 10 millimeter bolt that holds this little tab in place. This is actually here so that it prevents your belt from skipping a tooth on the crank. Take this off and remove the sprocket. It should just slide out. Just put even pressure on it. There you go. And now we can get to this seal here. I'm just gonna clean up the area so that there's no debris once the seal is off. That way nothing can get inside of the engine. And I'm gonna take a screwdriver, try to pry the seal out. And out it comes. Before you install this new seal, you want to put a little bit of petroleum jelly right on the inside here where the spring is. Make sure that that area is clean. And then take your seal, put it over the crankshaft. Just make sure that this lip, the inner lip, doesn't fold out when you do that. The petroleum jelly helps in that case. All right, so just put even pressure. Make sure it's flush with this outer lip. I'm going to take my brass hammer and just gently tap the seal in. The reason I'm using the brass hammer is because it's softer than the steel and it's less likely to damage anything. You can also use the rubber end if you'd like. All right, so just feel around. 
Make sure it's seated, still needs to go in a little bit up top here. Okay, that's better. A little bit more right here. You wanna make sure it's flush all the way around. All right, this feels perfect. It is even all the way around, so we're good to go. Now make sure the crankshaft is clean, free of debris. I took advantage of this sprocket being off and I clean it off with some brake parts cleaner. That way it's ready for the uh, belt to go back on. You don't want any oil, grease, or debris on the splines of this sprocket. Now line it up with the crankshaft and it's gonna have this little key uh, guide right here. You have to line it up perfectly. If it's just a little bit off, it won't go on. And once it's lined up, it should slide all the way in. Now let's get this retainer back, start on the bolt. Make sure it's nice and tight. Perfect. The next step will be to put back the backing plate for the cams and the cam gears. So make sure you line it up with all of its mounting holes and then put in all six of your bolts. I'm just gonna double check them by hand, make sure they're actually nice and tight. Perfect. Next step, cam gears. I remember the one that had the lip facing me is gonna be the backside cam and the little cutout on the cam gear will line up with this little pin here. It can only go on one way. Perfect, that's on. Start in the bolt. Now they do make a tool that holds these camshafts, but if you don't have the tool, you're gonna have to do what I'm doing and torque them when the timing belt is already on. So I'm just gonna make them, uh, I'm just gonna bottom them out right now. It's not, it's not gonna move, it's not gonna go anywhere and then I'm just gonna torque it with the timing belt on. And here's the front cam gear. Reattach this. So like I said, I'm just gonna bottom it out by hand, leave it at this, put the belt on, then torque these. Next, I am going to take care of the idler. I'm gonna put that back on. Torque this idler pulley to 32 foot-pounds. Next is the tensioner. Now, don't forget about this washer. This has to go on the back side of the tensioner, then stick the bolt through, make sure it catches onto the washer, and then start it onto its mounting hole here. Go ahead and snug it up, and then I'll torque it. Torque this bolt to 25 foot-pounds. And now let's install the actual tensioner. You'll notice that it has this pin right here. Do not pull this pin until the timing belt is on and properly aligned. And you wanna leave this rubber on. Uh, if your old cover is still in here, go ahead and pull it out. Mine is not. Take your two bolts and start them on. I'm not going to tighten this yet. I'm going to just position it into place. Then I'm gonna put the timing belt on. Then I'm gonna tighten this tensioner. But I do want it started so that it's ready for me when uh, when I'm ready. All right, that's started. All right, now it's time to put the belt on and I'm gonna slide it down, but I will actually start putting it onto this rear cam right here because in my opinion, that that one's gonna be the hardest one to put on once the, uh, once the belt is routed everywhere. So I'm gonna go around that rear cam, pull it tight, don't pull it too hard, but make sure it's there's no slack and then put it over this front pulley and make sure the teeth engage all the way around. Now bring this up and over the water pump, down underneath the crank, bring it up and over the water pump. Make sure it goes behind this stud and doesn't get caught. Bring it over the tensioner, which should not be tensioned yet, or you can put it on the crank first, whatever's easiest. Now you wanna pull tension on this side, so when you install it, you want this to be the tension side, and then pull it up and over the tensioner here. Slide it onto the crank. All right, now I'm gonna simulate the tensioner right here, and you can see I have a whole lot of slack here, which means I'm one tooth off on the crank. I need to go down there and bring it one tooth further. So you can see if I pull on it, it does wanna go one more tooth, which is exactly what I need in order for it to be tight. So I'm gonna take it off the tensioner, pull this tight, slide it on. 
go up and around over the tensioner. And now this side has tension. This side has slack, which is perfect because the tensioner will make up for that slack. Now go up top, double check your timing marks. This one is perfectly lined up. There's mild tension on here, mild tension on here. Those timing marks are lined up and this has slack. Although right here, if you can see, it's not sitting on the camshaft properly. So I'm going to actually push it on. There we go, perfect. Now it's sitting properly everywhere. Right here it has slack, so let's tighten up that tensioner. As I tighten up this tensioner, watch the pulley and the belt, and you'll see how it tightens up on this side. This side, like I said, is already tight. Now when you tighten this up, make sure you're going uh, evenly on both sides. So do a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here, a little bit there to balance out the load. You don't want to snap any of these uh, two ears here. You can see it goes kind of crooked in between. That's tight. All right, let's torque it. Torque these two to 20 foot-pounds. And now you can pull the pin. And tension has been applied to the timing belt. Now with the belt installed, what I like to do is I like to turn the engine a couple times over and that will ensure that the belt is sitting on properly. If it's a tooth off and you turn over the engine several times, it's not gonna line up with the marks anymore. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the engine over several times with my breaker bar. Right there, I've made several turns. It's not easy when you're fighting the compression. But as you can see, these marks still line up in the back, lines up perfectly. And down on the crank, it also lines up perfectly. So that's exactly what we want. Let's continue. Now that I know the belt does not have to come off anymore, everything is perfect, I'm gonna go ahead and torque the cam bolts. So what I wanna do is put a breaker bar with a 22 millimeter socket on my crank. That's gonna hold it for me. Again, they do make a tool to hold this, but I don't have it, so I'm gonna do it this way. The front cam gear gets torqued to 94 foot-pounds and the rear gets torqued to 65 foot-pounds. So what you just heard was the breaker bar propping itself up against the control arm. This is how I have it set up here. It's gonna hold the belt in place. Now, will it put some tension on the belt? Of course it will, but not enough to damage it. That's it. That's 94 foot-pounds. Let's do the rear to 65. Don't ask me why they have different torques. That's what the book says. All right, that's 65. If you wanna put thread locker on these, you definitely can. But when I took them out, they didn't have any thread locker, so that's how I'm gonna install them. The next item on the list is going to be this engine mount bracket here. I'm gonna remove this top bolt. This lower bolt, though, has to stay in because there's no way you can put it in once it's mounted, you won't have room with the frame. So that stud right there has to go into this hole and then this stud goes into this hole right here. And it's not easy to get it to line up, but it's definitely doable. I like to put that lower one on first, then bring this mount down a little bit at an angle and then slide the top on. Once it's lined up, it should slide in all the way, and then you can start in the bottom bolt and this one, which you'll have room to insert. Start both of these, and uh, I'll snug them up. I need to put a nut on here and tighten it up. That's nice and tight. And I'll do the same to this lower bolt here, the upper bolt. And I'm gonna also put the lower nut on and I'm gonna snug that one up too. Perfect, that's nice and tight. So now I can put on this bracket, which goes between the bolt and the washer and the washer goes between the bracket and the alternator. Slide that on and reattach the nut Make sure this is nice and snug. 
don't tighten this bolt yet because the alternator still needs to move up and down. This is going to get tightened after the belt goes on. Remove your crank bolt. <coughs> now you can install this little plate ring spacer right here. This is actually uh, going to get sandwiched between the harmonic balancer and the sprocket and that's going to guide and hold your timing belt in place in case it wants to walk off. And now you can install the lower timing cover just like that. And I'm going to put in my bolts. I'm not going to put that one in. This one up here I think was missing. So I'll install a bolt in there. Up here there's another one and I'm going to snug them all up. Nice and tight. Since I'm down here, might as well continue to putting on the harmonic balancer. Slide this right over and it should slide on by hand all the way down. If it doesn't, you probably have it crooked at an angle, in which case, well, pull it off, adjust it, wiggle it back and forth like I did. And uh, like I said, it should slide all the way down. Install your crank bolt and snug it down. Then we'll torque it. This bolt gets torqued to 159 foot-pounds. I don't have a tool to hold this. I don't want to hold that 159 foot-pounds by the camshafts. I don't want to stretch the belt. So I'm just gonna, so I'm just gonna make it nice and tight with my air gun. That should do it. Might as well continue down here. Go ahead and reattach the power steering belt. Make sure it goes over the harmonic balancer in the back, but feel for it so that it goes into its grooves and then put it over the power steering pump. Just like that. Again, double check it, make sure it has lined up with its grooves. You don't want it to be one tooth off because in that case, when you start the vehicle, it'll just shred this belt and throw it everywhere. And uh, well, you don't want that. So for me right here, it's actually a little bit off. There we go, that's better. Now it's seated properly all the way around. And the way I'm gonna do this is I have my ratchet ready to tighten up this bolt. Now you can manually pull on this power steering pump and pull it away to tension the belt. You can also use a pry bar, stick it up in between right here and just pry the power steering pump away. As I pry it away before I fully tighten my tensioner, I wanna check the tension and make sure that it's accurate. The best way to kind of eyeball the tension is to take your belt turn it 90 degrees on its longest stretch. So these two are even, so it doesn't matter, but you take the longest stretch of belt, you turn it 90 degrees and it's, it shouldn't want it turned past. So see how right here, I can easily turn it past. That's not good. That's mean, that means it's too loose. If I pry it too much, it doesn't even want to spin 90 degrees. So that's not good. That means it's too tight. So loosen it up a little right there is perfect. I'm going to tighten up my bolt now. All right, I can let go of this. Double check it again. Uh, I think it could go a little more actually. Right there. Okay, let's test that. Uh, that's a little too much now. Ooh, right there is perfect. Okay, tighten it up. Make sure this is nice and tight so it doesn't lose tension by itself. All right, and let's finish it off with the bolt up top. And that bolt is not just hard to get to, it's also really hard to see, but it's right there. Tighten that up and this will completely lock the power steering pump in place. All right, that's done. I'm gonna double check this one. Oh yeah, that's tight. Continuing down here, I'm gonna put this shield back on. Put the wheel on. And start on all of your lug nuts. I'll bottom them out and torque them to 76 foot-pounds. And of course, don't forget your center cap. The next step is to put back this upper timing cover, slide it into place 
It's a little tricky getting it past that rear cam, but it could be worse. There we go. Make sure the wire doesn't get pinched under here. And once it's in place, you can start on all of your bolts. Okay, slight issue. Okay, so welcome back. It's been a few minutes. Um, I figured out the issue. So the reason this wasn't setting into place is because I put on the top bolt for that lower timing cover, which you're not supposed to put on because this cover actually slides behind it. That little corner slides behind the lower timing cover. So that was my issue. And I've taken that bolt out and now I can, I can barely see it, but I can slide this cover behind that one and now it sits perfectly. So now I'm gonna go ahead and install my bolts. <laughs> Time for this engine mount to go back in. Uh, you can notice I put some anti-seize here. I cleaned it up and I put some anti-seize here. That's hopefully gonna make it so that the uh, engine mount in the dowel pin, or the engine mount bracket, I should say, uh, in the dowel pin won't get seized in there in the future. Now this bracket can go on. And before I do that, actually, I'm gonna take my bungee cord off this wiring harness so it can lay back down. And you can, at this point, snap it into its little locations. Now this goes over just like this. Insert this rear bolt, start that on, put on this side bolt, and finally these two long ones that go all the way through. Start all these in. I'm gonna start by tightening these two long ones, 14 millimeter. Make sure they're tightened evenly. And then these two 12s. Remove the bolt for this mount here and here, and install the engine mount. The shorter of the two bolts goes right here through the back, and then the longer one goes right here through the front. It's easier to start in this front bolt first, and then once that's started, you can line up this rear bolt, snug up this one, and snug up this one. And I'm gonna check them both with my ratchet, make sure they're nice and tight. Yep, nice and tight. All right, let's get the uh, alternator belt on. So because a lot of dust and debris fell down, I'm going to clean these pulleys with some brake parts cleaner. You can use compressed air or whatever else you have. But I wanna make sure they're also degreased and um, free of any substance such as coolant that is not supposed to be on the belt. All right, let that dry for a minute. Speed it up with a blowgun. Grab your alternator belt. I'm gonna start it onto the harmonic balancer first, but the toughest part is to actually clear the AC compressor because it's right up against the frame. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna start it on the harmonic balancer and the AC compressor. I'm gonna keep the alternator for last. Make sure it's sitting on all of its ribs properly, which it is. And now slip it right onto here. Perfect, give it a couple spins and now let's snug it up. And the way to check the tension for this is the same that we did for the power steering. So this right here between the alternator and the harmonic balancer is the longest stretch of this belt that's straight. So once I tighten it up, I wanna take this belt, spin it 90 degrees and see how easily it spins. If it lets me easily spin it 90 degrees but not past, that's perfect. Okay, so right there, let's check the tension. Um, that's actually a little too tight, so I'm going to loosen it up. Okay, I feel like this right here is perfectly um, tightened. So I'm going to remove my tool. Right at the front here, don't forget that you have to snug up this uh, other 12 millimeter bolt that basically locks everything in. All right, make sure that's nice and tight. Lastly, don't forget about this bolt up here. Tighten that up. Make sure that's nice and snug. The next step is going to be reinstalling this coolant overflow. Make sure that that little tab matches up with that rubber grommet and it slides in and locks it into place. And once that happens, you can put in your bolt and make sure it's not cross-threading and then bottom it out. Next, reconnect these two grounds and you definitely want to make sure that these are properly secured otherwise you'll have engine starting and runability issues potentially. So make sure those are tucked out of the way 
And one last thing to do is to put on the strut brace. If you have one, make sure you bottom it out. And then go ahead and torque it to 59 foot-pounds on all four of the nuts that you took off. Now you can go ahead and fill it up with coolant. You can use universal coolant like I'm using, or you can use Toyota Red coolant. That's up to you. All right, so the next step is going to be starting up the vehicle, letting it run. Make sure everything runs smoothly. If you hear any funny noises, then, then shut it off and double check your work. Um, have the heat on in the car. Make sure it's all the way to hot. Don't, you don't have to have the blower on all the way, uh, but do have it on so you can feel the heat when it st starts to come through. You wanna make sure that the coolant circulates through the heater core. So uh, let's go ahead and start it up. All right, so once the car has run, the coolant is bled and the radiator fans have come on. I would suggest letting it sit like this until the coolant settles down, the engine cools down. Then you can cap off your um, funnel, put your radiator cap back on, and take it for a road test.